In the uh, Canvas starter application, one of the issues that we run into is the ability to send values from the Rails application into the React application. And we've done, we've had this problem or run into this situation on basically every JavaScript app that we've ever worked on. And in a lot of the applications, the way that we handled it was creating kind of a global JavaScript object in the page and then just referencing that object somewhere inside of the framework. Uh, that has some downsides, including it's hard to test and it's hard to know where exactly those values are used. Um, at least when you first look at the code, because you're like, where does this magic URL come from? Uh, so I spent some time thinking about how to handle this in the React applications that we're building especially in the context of the Flux architecture. So just to give you a little bit of context, this is where the problem begins. We have this API.js that lives in the Actions folder. And based on some of the, there, there's lots of different approaches. Some people let their stores talk to their servers. Other people recommended that the Actions talk to the server to get data. And I chose to go down the path of using the actions to talk to the server because it looked like that was what Facebook did. So I thought we'll just follow the best practices from the team at Facebook. Um, right here, we have this make URL. And this is the point at which we need to gen build a URL that can talk to the server. Now, in a lot of applications, you simply just use a relative URL and that works fine. But in our case, and anytime we build these applications going forward, we have a Rails server, and it's running on a specific port or a specific domain. And we also have the Webpack hot reload server, which is running on a different port. So if you were to use the relative URL, it's going to attempt to make this API call back to the Webpack server, when in fact the data is not available from the Webpack server, it's available from the Rails server. So we have to pass in a URL, and in this case we've named it API URL, that can be used to contact the Rails server to get the data. So the problem becomes where do we get that value from? Um, and like I said before, one of the solutions was simply to do something like window dot um, settings, you know, and you'd have a global value defined, and then you do API URL. Um, and that works, but then you have this global value down somewhere in your code, and it makes it somewhat difficult to test because somehow you have to set up the window settings uh, value before you can um, run your tests. So that's a little bit ugly. What I've done instead is inside of the Rails pages, we still have this window default setting, so that's the value that Rails is going to provide to us, and here's where the API URL comes from. But then when the application starts up, we have a section to initialize, and I call this before I call the routes. So any of the default data that's going to be provided from Rails, uh, we can load into the stores via the actions simply by calling a specific action. Um, so in this case, we're getting the default settings and we're loading that value in, and that way, the only point at which we have to touch these global settings is when the is in the initialization of the application. The rest of the React application will never know about or see those values. This also has a benefit when writing tests in that I can call settings action dot load and give it some kind of a mock object so that the store is properly loaded and I can test it. Um, the other benefit to this is we could load other data. So if there were some initial data that the Rails application needed to provide to the client, maybe a list of accounts or a current user, or maybe a token so that they can make secure requests, that's probably one of the next values that we're going to stick into this default settings. It could be loaded at this point in the application. So um, I have the settings action dot load. And if I go into my settings dot JS act, the, where the action lives, you'll see here's the load action. It just takes a default settings object and then dispatches that with a settings load constant, and that 
value that was provided from the Rails server. Then inside of the store, here's in the dispatcher register, we respond to that. And then we just load the settings right here. And now those settings are available to the rest of the application, anybody who needs to access this store. Now the nice thing here is, is that we don't have to worry about any kind of uh, asynchronous problems, any race conditions, because even if the rest of the React application were to render before this store was populated, once the store receives this settings load action, it's still going to emit a change, which will cause the application to re-render, and then the settings will be available at that point. Um, all right, so now on to how you actually test this. So the tests become relatively easy. Here is the test for the store. Uh, in one of the previous trainings, we talked a little bit about testing stores, how it, it's a little complicated because stores have no setters. They only, they proactively get data based on actions. So in order to get the data into the store, we call that same settings.load. And here's where the advantage is. I can pass in a plain old JavaScript object. I don't have to somehow mock a window.default settings object somewhere. I can just load any data that I want at this point um, and then call the Jasmine clock tick, which will cause the dispatcher to dispatch the message, the action. And then right here, I can get the settings back from the store and I can test that. And if I run this test, you can see settings store current returns current settings and it is passing. So that's how um, I've decided that we'll initialize values into the React application. Hopefully this keeps things clean and that there, there's a clear boundary between the React application uh, where we are trying to avoid state as much as possible, and the React app or in the Rails application, which is providing some state. All right. Are there any questions about what I did or this approach or any feedback? Does anybody think that it's a bad idea? You talked about it avoiding any race conditions, but it seems like a lot of the app. I mean, if, if if that is the API endpoint, is your one example of what the settings contain, most of the other parts of the app are going to need that, right? They will need it. Um, and so what they'll need to do is watch for the settings store to emit a change, and then they would need to re-render, which would cause them to... Well, and I guess the different stores would also need to depend on this store. So that's one of the things I have not put in place. So that's a good point. The stores can depend on stores. And in this case, the other stores should depend on the settings JS store, probably. Um, and they need to be able to not barf if they can't, if they don't have an API endpoint. Right. So this guy right here needs to be able to say, oh, if this is not valid, then we'll wait and we'll do this when it is valid. 